Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So this is part four for of the recorded lecture for the topic uh, damages. So in part three we discuss about um, the second limb. Okay, basically uh, it's about the, the requirement of elements of knowledge and we, we discuss about uh, remoteness. Okay, so whenever the damage is re too remote, then it's not recoverable. So now we are going to discuss another subtopic, which is measure or quantum of damages. How do we assess how do we measure okay how, how do we know how much to, is to be uh, is to be awarded okay to the uh, victim so the quantum or measure of damages that will naturally arise from the finance breach usually is the plaintiff loss of profit or bargain so whatever profit that he has lost so he can get it from the uh, contract breaker and which would normally how to calculate which would normally be the difference between the market price and the contract price so the cut will try to see what's the gap what's the difference between the market price and also the contract price here we have illustration d to assist us here let me read out to you illustration d d c d okay all right d i think we have read okay it's okay i read again it's about uh, a contracts to buy base ship for sixty thousand. okay but breaks his promise so A must pay to B by way of compensation, the excess, if any, of the contract price over the price which B can obtain for the ship at the time of the breach of, of problem. For example, B uh, managed to secure another ship, okay, but the price is 70,000. So what's the gap? What's the difference of price here? It's 10,000. So B can get the, can claim the 10,000 difference, the gap uh, from uh, the contract breaker, from A. So let's go to the case. We have the case of Popular Industries Limited and Eastern Garment Manufacturing in Simbrahat. It involves a company in Canada, suing the company in Malaysia. They have a um, sale and purchase uh, contract or agreement here. Defendants fail, um, defendants are supposed to deliver garments okay, to the plaintiffs. So defendants fail to deliver the garments. Garment is like clothing or special uh, clothes, okay? Outfit. So between the months of January to June 1980, so it's like half uh, six months, okay. And plaintiff claimed that by reason of the defendant's breaches of the contract, they were unable to purchase similar goods on the market. So there's no replacement. Cannot get the similar item, and were so because of that, so were una unable to supply their customers, and they suffered loss of profit because they are expected to resell the garments. Okay, so they are expected to get the the, the profit from the resale of their garments. And this is the amount of claim. The plaintiff claim a sum of USD because uh, it involved international dealing here. So the currency used was USD, US dollar. So that's the amount of claim, 700, uh, 7, 7, 800, 7, 7, okay, 7, 70, okay, okay, plus plus here. Okay, which they said represented the average loss of Profits on resale. So the expected profit is they are going to re resell at 32,000 mark, 32% uh, 32 market mark, markup. Okay, markup price here, the profit of the landed value of the garments, okay, which the finance ought to have but did not deliver. So no delivery, so cannot get cannot get the profit. Expected one is 32% of the uh, the price. Okay. And so the, the court applied this rule in order to give the judgment, okay, when a plaintiff claims damages from a defendant, he has to show that, okay, the loss in respect for which he claimed damages was caused by the defendant's wrong. First, proof, proof that, another one, that the damages are not too remote to be recoverable, so must prove or must show both ways, yeah. And then in terms of measure of damages, how to calculate because the court doesn't know, okay? All right, you have to, pro pro uh, you have to prove your case. Normal measure of damages for non-delivery of goods uh, sold, okay, is the difference between the market price and the contract price. Uh, meaning that here, we assume uh, the, the victim, okay, the plaintiff is able to get a uh, replacement, okay, of the, um, of the things here, of the goods here. So this rule applies only where that is an available market. That is to say that the buyer should be able to go out and buy equivalent goods and replacement okay, because of the non-delivery of the goods. But in this case, they cannot get the replacement. Okay? So in the case of FOB or CIF contract, okay, FOB is free on board or CIF cost insurance uh, freight. Okay? The relevant market for the purpose of the assessment of uh, damages is the, in the case of non-delivery. So market price at which country? Here it involves Malaysia and Canada. So market price at the place of delivery. So basically market price in Canada basically. 
So in the present case, the port of destination of the goods was Montreal, Canada. And the parties involved, I mean the plaintiff here, both Ms. Mr. and Mrs. Sagal, and they had testified, okay, without challenge or, or contradiction, that they could not obtain the goods in Canada. No similar garments okay, being sold in Canada. As there was no market there for the same, nor could they have obtained the goods anywhere else. So can I get a replacement? As their quota had been exhausted. So there was no available alternative source whereby the plaintiff could have obtained replacement goods to mitigate their loss. If they can get replacement, they should go and buy because that will be the mitigation on their part okay, to minimize the, um, the cost, I mean the, the, the loss of profit here. So on the part of the plaintiff, okay, as far as mitigation was concerned, plaintiff had therefore discharged the burden of proof which lay upon them in this regard. So no need to find, all, uh, to find alternative source okay, to, uh, to, to go and buy the replacement goods because why? That's not, it's not available okay, in Canada. Okay, on top of proving um, measure, okay, measurement of damage here, yeah, also the, the related requirement is proof of damage. Okay, here, yeah, you have proof, yes, yeah, there was a breach and then uh, you suffer this amount of losses, cannot mitigate, cannot get the replacement. So now the next step is plaintiff must produce satisfactory evidence, usually the documentary evidence to enable the court to make reasonable evaluation of the loss incurred. In order for the court to allow the claim, so the court needs all the evidences, all the documentation, especially for example, receipt or whatever, or, or the report or, or audited report or whatever. So we have this case, I think we, uh, you learned this case in your contract one, okay, when you discuss about oral contract, because the contract in this case was, was made orally. So the case is tied, Ja'far bin Sa Ibrahim and Maju Mehar Singh travel and tours in Merhat 1999. What happened here? Plaintiff is a simple villager, okay, bent on making a commission out of Hajj and Umrah travel. So plaintiff managed to gather, uh, to get okay, 100 persons from various villages in Kota Baru who wanted to perform the Hajj in May 1992. And he's the one who is responsible. It's like his uh, representative, okay. He had also collected some money from them and their passport for purpose of travel arrangement. And then uh, the plaintiff contended uh, that defendant orally agreed. So th that's oral promises, okay, by the defendant. In consideration, the plaintiff providing these passengers, so um, and collecting the the the, the fees here five thousand five hundred here. Yeah? So the defender would this is the promises by the defendant. They will issue written tickets. Okay, they will get the visa. They will make uh, uh, arrangement for accommodation. And the most important part number four, they will pay commission of two hundred to the plaintiff. Okay, for every passenger brought by him for the defendant, as if. Uh, plaintiff is the agent to um, get all the uh, passengers okay, for, to perform Hajj. So what happened, the first group of 74 passengers okay, departed from Kota Baru and arrived at the Subang International Airport. But the defendant informed the plaintiff they could not get um, the visa. So now all the passengers were stranded. Okay? So the defendant represented to the plaintiff on the same day that the first group of passengers could depart with the second group. They come the promise by the defendant say, okay, no problem, okay, they are going to um, depart together, okay, later, at a later date. Because later they will uh, secure their visa. And then because of, because of the facts that now they have to wait, okay, so they are stranded uh, at, the, at the airport. So plaintiff claimed that they had, he had to make arrangement for accommodation and provide food for the passengers in KL, in Kuala Lumpur. So he placed them in various hotels in Kuala Lumpur and paid for their accommodation. And then, um, on the part of the uh, defendant, okay, the actual cost uh, for the travel arrangement is that that that, that price, okay, one uh, one thousand one thousand nine hundred, and then um, defendant give discount twenty five percent. So actual cost was total cost is two hundred sixteen thousand, and then because of that, plaintiff claim uh, the full amount, okay, minus the actual cost incurred by the defendant, and so the full uh, claim is six hundred uh, fourteen thousand ringgit five hundred. Now the court held that yes, uh, there was a breach here. They have informed the plaintiff. So the next question is whether the plaintiff is entitled to make the various claim. Can we allow the claim or not? Okay, who is plaintiff? Does he have the local standard? Is he the agent? Is he the representative for all the passengers? So uh, as far as the claim was concerned, there's no evidence. Okay, no documentary evidence, no witness whatsoever. No evidence before the court that the 150 passengers had not been refunded their money or not been furnished a ticket subsequently. So we don't know what happened. Okay, did the passenger got the refund? Okay, what happened to the ticket? Did they get the ticket or not? And 
on the part of the plaintiff, there is also no evidence that 150 passengers had authorized the plaintiff to sue on their behalf because because actually the real victim is the passengers. Okay? So, and then the court said it is trite law, okay, a matter of principle, that special damages must be both specifically pleaded and proved. So, plaintiff pleaded the case, but it wasn't properly proved, no evidence, okay, in respect of two things here. So, in the circumstances, it is the court's judgment that the plaintiff has failed to prove the claim. So, meaning the plaintiff failed on the final stage of the uh, case here. Okay, there was a breach, but then uh, it wasn't properly proved. No, enough, not enough evidence. And then we, we come back to the popular industries case. Okay, we discuss it under measure here. Yeah? Measure, remember, they cannot get replacement for the non delivered item garments. So now the last stage is that how to assess damages. Okay, yes, there's a breach, but how to uh, give the amount that they claim. So the court went to consider the crucial question. Okay, have the plaintiff proved their claim for damages as alleged or at all? What's your proof? What's your evidence that you suffer this amount of damages here? So under cross examination by counsel for the defendant, the witness said he did not have with him the plaintiff audited account. No audited account. You see, it's a mere allegation that okay, I re usually re resell at thirty two percent markup. Okay, the profit. So because of that, okay, no audited account. So uh, the witness cannot give uh, could not give full particulars of the plaintiff account for that uh, alleged duration, nineteen seventy five until nineteen eighty two. So eventually, they cannot get the amount that they ask. Okay, no, not enough evidence. Okay, because the court cannot simply give whatever that you allege or you claim. What's the evidence? Especially the documentary evidence, audited account, or even eyewitness. But here, no, nothing. Okay. All right, so we stop here. We are going to uh, finish the whole topic in the final part of our uh, Zoom recorded lecture. Thank you for listening. Let me stop share first. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you in the final part.